Water Project County. I've met with Mr. Whitcher twice. He's trying to get started, but he's only starting it pouring down rain. Last I heard from him, uh, I met with him Thursday or Friday. He planned on starting today if it wasn't pouring down rain. Of course, you know what happened, so he's just waiting for the weather to break so we can get started. So that could be June. His starting date is tomorrow, which is just a period of days. So. Second reading on Ordinance 211-118 on the water sanitation. Budget for this? Yes, yeah, we passed it on the first year last month. month. Okay, I'm making a motion we approve second reading. I thought Nancy's effort is for the pump house. I got done with order today. Okay. Okay. <coughs> What's number uh, 2010 118? I don't want it to. In the 2010-11 budget for the water and sewer fund, whereas the city of Tennessee Ridge has previously adopted the operating budget for the fiscal year 2010-11, and whereas the board of commissioners for the city of Tennessee Ridge has determined that, that the appropriate appropriation in the interest of the citizens for the city of Tennessee Ridge funds to be amended to the water and sewer fund. Now, everybody at the ordinance for the board of commissioners of the city of Tennessee Ridge has followed. Section 1, continuous uh, disinfection and monitoring system, $5,251.95. And Section 2, all resolutions ordinance in conflict with this provision are given by a menu. Yeah, I think I see him coming in. Is it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I put a ordinance on number 210119. We're going to come in the budget for the water and fill the home. This is the first reading on this one. Mm -hmm. This is the first reading on this. This ordinance number uh, 2010 number 9 at to condemn the 2010 11 budget for the water and sewer fund. Okay. 
Motion to approve. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. We have ordinance number 2010-120. An ordinance to amend the 2010-11 budget for the water and sewer fund. This will be first reading. This is all transfers too. No new money. transfers. No new money or anything. Motion to approve. Yeah, second. All those in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Aye. Next item under own business is the city hall. Okay. Do you have any updates? Yes, I do. Uh, Y'all asked me at the last meeting just to pop by and talk to Mr. Seth Ryan about the uh, engineering of it. I did. He just showed up tonight. I have also talked to the three property owners that, that y'all requested me to speak to. The Clarence building is at 250 now. I talked to Mr. Potter at the church. It's still at 125. And I spoke to Mr. Frizzell at the corner of Grace Crossing. And it is negotiable. He said he's nothing firm on the 125. He said he could split it up into whatever we wanted to split up into or sell it at the uh, the whole thing. But I guess it was more or less y'all making offer. How much? How many acres was that up there? Three point nine. Three point something. I won't say nine. But that's that's kind of where we are on that. Y'all make a decision. There, there's one thing that we need to kind of look at if if we go with the church site down here. We need well, we will probably have to get somebody in to check for asbestos. But then as we're getting rural development money, I'm sure that we'll probably have to have it checked to make sure that, and if it is, we'll have to go through the process of the abatement of it. Okay. And Mr. Wright, he, he come up with us, uh, we called him, me and the mayor had a meeting with him, and I asked him to be here, and he had, I told him about what we was looking for in City Hall. And uh, he come up with some pictures and some blueprints, and he's here to speak to the board tonight on about what the engineering fees will run. If, if you don't mind, I'll turn it over to Mr. Seth. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Delbert. Again, uh, we really appreciate just appreciate the the, the call and, and appreciate you all, you know, thinking of us uh, enough to, to come to come, you know, have the mayor and, and city manager come talk to us about this. So I just wanted to say thank you uh, a lot. Just you know, just for the. Just, just for talking with us, we're a uh, firm located in here. Uh, we do work in this uh, all across the state. Um, we've got some stuff going on far south is the Alabama line uh, to Montgomery County. Um, got some stuff going on in Humphreys County and, and all around the area. And so we're just really pleased that that we can, you know, just come and, and show you uh, a few ideas that we had um, for Tennessee Ridge. And uh, I've got um, I've got a little bit of a literature here that I can that I can hand out. Uh, if, if that's okay, yeah, that's kind of just to, to kind of give a, um, I, I went ahead and just put our our proposal in in writing uh, okay. for you, and I'll give you can just give you those however y'all like to. There's okay. two full copies there, and I also have some uh, some other copies that don't have the the, the, the company pamphlet in, in the back for your uh, for your use also. It just it, out, it outlines. I wanted, wanted to go ahead and put everything. Uh, you can pass those pass those around if you like, and just uh, these are also just some of our in a nutshell uh, what we do there. If you want to pass those? Pass those out. Uh, that's another another brochure. I've also got I've got some the way I like to do this. If y'all got I don't want to I don't want to belabor your whole uh, your process here, but I do have also brought like a picture board in. 
to show you some of those photos that uh, that I had shown with shown Mr. Dunham but about a couple of examples of some buildings that are out there now that uh, might be just something for you to for you to consider. Um, and then we can we can go over what's what's in that proposal. Uh, I don't know where the best place to uh, this booklet. And I'll, I can pass this around also. It has it has the photos in it. I'll start this over on this side. And uh, these are of a, a town we do some work in um, down in southern Middle Tennessee. Uh, that you can kind of see some examples. And obviously, there's a lot of there's a lot of different ways that uh, that you can go with this. And whenever you know, whenever you, no matter who, uh, we just took a couple of. See, Mr. Brown, I may yes. lose some of this stuff if you don't mind. I'm no, he, he already unplugged his phone right. for me. Yeah, he does. And he and I can bring this, this up close. That book has the same photos in there, but just as a, I apologize, I should people out here see this. Hey, see that. But yeah, um, it's just kind of a photo of what we did. Is there's a, and, and we we took a look at two separate buildings that after kind of just based on just some general some general ideas that uh, Mr. Dunham had, had had mentioned that you all need. Uh, one is ADA compliance. I know you're going to have to be ADA compliant. The building over on your, uh, on your, I guess that'd be your right hand, your right hand side, or excuse me, your, your left over there, is a, that is a 5,000 square foot building that um, is, is, was built, I think, two years ago. Three three years ago and um, just kind of an example that, that's that might be a little bit bigger than what you're what you're thinking about there but you can see it has a it has a brick uh, brick front facade to it uh, the actual this this building has um, has brick all the way around it and probably Mr. Dunham uh, has some really good ideas on saving saving some money there that might it might be something you might be looking at at uh, trying to go with a different maybe a different material in the you know in the back like a metal or something like that but that's where we we also uh, visited another site, which has a much smaller. This is a this is actually a utility office. Uh, it's a much smaller uh, smaller building. I think it's more like around 1,500 square square feet. And uh, some of the features that that you know you might be able to make make benefit of here, that Mr. Dunham mentioned, was uh, like a drive up having a drive up bill pay uh, window. So there's there's several you know there's 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 features of, of both of these buildings that I think you could you know you could look at and um, come up you know you may have your own you know have your own ideas about it but it's just something to kind of kind of get a get a look at one other thing that, that we wanted to wanted to, to call out in this middle uh, middle pane of this 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 poster here there's a community room uh, area that that uh, that this the larger building has in it. And it, it serves as both their council chambers and the chairs are removable so that you can you know they can have events and things like that in the same in the same room. Kind of a multi-purpose can serve as council chambers and then can serve as a multi-purpose area. Um, you know that's that was one of the, the nice features of this. And you know obviously that could be configured in a, in a lot of different a lot of different ways. Um, this uh, what we what we were thinking and after looking and again it kind of depends on on the budget you're looking at, but if you, uh, we were kind of thinking of a sort of a hybrid approach between these two concepts and, and coming up with a building that's more like about 2,400 square feet uh, as a, you know, kind of as an example to go by. And um, at $100 a square foot, you know, you're looking at a, a building to cost, you know, would, would probably cost around uh, $240,000 for the building. Now, that can be obviously the size of that can be adjusted, but that's just kind of a, kind of a, uh, a roundabout figure of, you know what something like this might cost, and you know if we're if if y'all would like us to to design a building like that for you, you know the the percentage is, is approximately eight percent is what is what we would is what we would charge to take this thing all the way from you know the conceptual you know getting down making sure you all are getting getting a building that you want uh, working through that whole process to uh, all the all the design the architectural the structural. The uh, the plumbing, HVAC, you know, and, and making sure that the, the building is compliant, uh, we do that for about eight percent. Which on which on a building of two hundred forty thousand, I think it comes up to like nineteen thousand two hundred dollars is uh, is what is what the engineering fee would be on something like this. So I want to be very upfront 
about what we would charge for, you know, for taking this, and that, that's also bidding the project, and the competitive bid, you know, to meet with your uh, municipal uh, requirements there, all the state requirements that are that are present with that. So that's that's that that would be our uh, a good estimate. Now, you know, if the price of this goes up, then the fee we would talk to you about the fee being adjusted if it's a lot, you know, because it's just going to actually cost more to design a bigger building. If something was smaller, we would also talk with you about, you know, adjusting that price, uh, that price downward too on a smaller building. So, but uh, trying to think. The thing Tony talked to you about was about a sixty by forty somewhere mm -hmm. in that in that size. Mm -hmm. And does does this cost include the? Periodic inspections throughout the construction of it, or will that be an addition? Well, that would be that would be an additional additional cost. Now, if it's we just it would depend on the scope of that. If you want somebody there every day, which you probably don't need, right. that would be obviously more expensive. But if we were just going to come up there on a periodic basis, you know, have somebody come up once a week to check on things or an as needed basis, you're not probably talking about maybe a, maybe another percent or something like that. That's just a, a ballpark, and we could give you some some firm figures on that. But if it's just a Kind of a, a periodic spot check. It's not going to be a lot of. You're not talking about a lot of. You know, a lot. Well, of this ain't exactly there. like a water line where you really need an, an inspector there all the time. Yeah. You know, just a periodic, maybe once a week or so, just to make sure no corners are being cut anywhere. Yeah, that would be would be my suggestion. Yeah. I, I think that's a good suggestion, and also something too. You know, it, again, uh, we can get into a lot of these if we're so. You know. Uh, lucky to be able to, to help you all further with this. We could get into the details, but and just some other ideas that we could try to, you know, try to keep this. You can see both these structures are not overly um, elaborate. They don't look like they necessarily would belong like in, in the middle of a major downtown area. They look, to me, they look like something that, that you could get a lot of local, you get local contractors to be, give very good prices on, I think, be very comfortable, you know, get a lot of local competition, which I think is key here. Uh, to, to keeping your price down in construction. So that's a couple of these concepts, you know, and obviously we can go in a lot of different directions with this, but that's, um, you know, some of the some of the, the reasons we picked these two because they were, and I, and I believe they were both done in that time, they were both, they were done using local, you know, local contractors were able to come in and compete uh, without, you know, without having to go to, to, to a lot of the bigger, uh, the bigger cities to get contractors out of. So like when, when me, you and the mayor met down there, you know, kind of what me and him had in mind that we took from the board was maybe something along the lines of a metal building with a brick facade in the front. That's kind of that's kind of the way that, you know, the cost effective way if this happens is to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, that's, and that's exactly right. I mean, kind of give you, on, on that note, I think we told to give you an idea, these build, we had actual numbers on these buildings. Your big building over there, with all brick all the way around, you know, it was uh, it was around and it's, it's over five thousand square feet. I think maybe it, it was it maybe fifty five hundred square feet. It was around six hundred thousand to build three years ago. This building, which is a much more economical, but even if you want it bigger, it's still a much more economical style to go with, was around sixty thousand dollars, and that was uh, that that was ten years ago. So I mean, it's going to be, be more right. expensive than that now. But that just kind of gives you an idea of the. Of the range that you could that you could be in, and, and I agree with Mr. Don. But if, if you could take take this and make it a uh, make it big, make it a little bit bigger to get you the space that you need, and uh, you know maybe make the, the front a little bit more decorative to to uh, you know to match uh, you know the, the spirit of the town uh, there. You could I believe you could you know I believe you could do that uh, and and probably come away you know come away with a, a much more economical you know building to build. So let me stop you just a second yes. on this. The difference here, and I know the price, of course, but <coughs> what's going on today? How these buildings here, these metal buildings, they they want to withstand some strong winds and and mm. and you know I've, the roof and everything like that. Is that like you know some of the winds that we've had here the last few days and stuff like that? Is that I know I, I'm assuming the brick is stronger all the way around. But I mean, is that? Going to withstand some pretty good winds. Yeah, that's a very, very good question. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, and it, the, the answer is if it's designed properly, and that's what you have to make sure of. You know, you see a lot of barns and things that may be put up that aren't designed to a strict of a, a building code, and those would not, maybe right. not necessarily withstand, even though they might look, you know, similar. Um, if you're just looking at it from the surface, those buildings, you know, a, a shed or a, um, a, a you know equipment building is probably not going to be built most of the time to the strictest standards as you would um, if you if you were building one for occupancy. Okay. So that's where you, it would have to meet the same. Both of these two buildings would have to meet the same the same codes. If, you know, if you wanted them to, and I realize that, that you know Tennessee Ridge 
building code, you know, may not have a, a form, but we would want to design this thing to where it would where it would withstand, like you say, both of these would be equal as far as wind loads and things of that nature. That's a good question. I mean, we, uh, we hate to build something and then one big windstorm or tornado <laughs> comes through and we have to prepare right off the bat. Right. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a really good, really good question. storms around here quite a bit. So. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's a good question. And like I say, I would just, I would advise, uh, you know, making sure that, that, uh, that you know the building codes are, are followed when you're you know when you're when you're doing that to, you know prevent that problem. Uh, and I, any other? Uh, I guess I, I didn't even introduce my my staff here. This is Mike Shepard. Uh, Mike Shepard is um, I met Mike at the city the city of Clarksville. He's, he's retired from the city of Clark for what 32 years. Yeah, yeah. As a, a superintendent over the water wastewater construction for 32 years. And uh, Matthew Rye, um, he's he's currently he's Mike's project manager, and Matthew also is is uh, is up managing uh, one of our projects on the up, up in Montgomery County right now. And uh, really glad to that's my brother. I'm really glad to really glad to have him on doing a doing a wonderful job too. And, and I cast Rye in the back with my dad. So we're, when we say Rye Engineering, there's a lot of, a lot of Rye's involved, but we're we're. Uh, we're really, I'm really uh, appreciative to, to have a to have a good staff here, and, and I appreciate that they that they came up. And another thing too that, that Mr. Dunham mentioned, as far as you know, going up and checking on those projects. The good thing is, why it's not going to cost much is because we're we're close. And, and if there's any problems with it, come by the office, and we can we'll talk about it. If I need to come up come up to the site any time, or, or have someone come up there, you know, if there if problems are going on, that's that's another advantage we feel like that we can. You know, we can bring to the table for you know for local uh, you know local communities um, and it, that makes it you know hopefully would make that a des desirable desirable they say part of it. Tell them about the police the police on that. <clears throat> oh yeah, but yeah, this man, that's a good point. This this uh, the the brick building, the more expensive building. It, it also has. I don't know if you, you look at the front. It has kind of the three the three gables there. The center gable is, is where you walk in. That's the lobby area. But the one to the it's be the one to your right is a police department area. And I know I realize that that may not that could be something that could be omitted from a design like that to make it less expensive, or it could be used for a different area. That's one reason the square footage on that one is so big um, for a town that's really that, that town is really not not a very big you know a, a large town. But it, it has, uh, but they went ahead and made, they have a police department there. So that's what they, they use that part. So that could be modified, you know, in, in the, and again, we can start from scratch with a set of plans too. There's, there's nothing to say that we, that we couldn't do that. But that's why, one reason why that, that building was built bigger than it probably really needed to be just for a city hall, just for a city hall building. But I guess with you know with any questions y'all have, uh, and, and even after this meeting, just feel free to give me a call. I've got my card in there, um, and just you know we'll be happy to to uh, to come up or to, to answer any questions that we can about about anything as far as this goes. Or we they still we'll turn it around. Yeah. Oh, we don't get so the crowd can see. Oh yeah, Mr. Davis. Well, I know I saw the crowd here can see it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to thank the camp too for hearing us out here. I know y'all. Oh, okay. Well. Thank you. Got it. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Something. Well, so that you came and presented. Yeah. 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 We're just able to do it. This, and I'm not trying to get in his. I promise you, I'm not. This building is where they accept payments for the water and the sewer and all that. And then this other one, it has to drive up here. And that other one, they pay taxes. You know, they pay their property tax down there. And uh, that that building. Probably those photos don't do it justice, but now that it, it's not it's not elaborate, it's not fancy, but it is useful. I mean, that where they have their council, that that is a nice a nice area. They've got a permanent where they sit, and then all these chairs they just move them out when they have when they have, But it's it's sharp. Where were those? Ardmore, Tennessee. Ardmore. Sixty-five South Exit One. Yeah. It's a uh, and, and again there are you know if, if we're if y'all like us to, to go further with this with this process you know it, we want to make sure if you get something that that the, that the city of Tennessee Ridge is going to be proud of and, and this may not be the answer this is just some some experience we had had with uh, with some buildings but we could bring a, a wide array of, of uh, photographs and some some floor plan sketches that we could work directly with you all to you know to get them to, to get it the way you to get it the way you want it so 
So yeah, we really appreciate appreciate the opportunity to come by and and, uh, and talk to you about it. And you know, we'd love to, to be able to, to do this work for you to help you out. So just if, if we can be of help, please you know please just let us know on that. And like I say, any questions that you all have, we'll, we'll certainly certainly try to, to answer. Kenneth, is that? I pretty yeah. well. Okay. Does that cover everything that y'all yeah. asked me to do yeah. last month? Yeah. Kind of give you some ideas of what's going on. I guess the first thing we're, we're definitely going to, have to move forward with something, or we're going to have to start holding meetings. Did you ever talk to her about that? Because I think we actually, after May one, we may actually have to start holding our meetings in another building in another facility somewhere. The way I understood what she told us the last time she was down here, because there's no way we're going to have anything done by. Maybe. And we're just going to get a clarification that, that maybe they'll let us carry on here after if we're making a good faith effort in trying to go forward with this is, is what we're hoping. But she never did really clarify when we asked her in here the other day. And we we have tried to call back a time or two and we have not been able to get a hold of it. But, um, you know, I guess the biggest thing the board got to do now is just figure, you know, which piece of property do you want to sue? And then if you if you want to uh, go with Mr. Bryce engineering firm or, or whatever, there, there's a couple of decisions that I feel have to be made and then we can get back with you said hopefully yeah. within the next 30 to 90 days That's fine. and get That's things fine. to moving forward. Okay. But we do appreciate you showing up. Oh, yeah, you're, you're welcome. welcome. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks. Enjoy your presentation. It was great. Well, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thanks again. Yeah. Glad you found something to do. Yeah, me too. Do you want to have any more questions for Seth or Tennessee? No, I've just got a remark on the next thing. Do, we, do we know about rural development money for this thing yet or not? Or is that something? She, she talked about the last thing that she couldn't make it because we changed it. But, and I can't remember the amount she quoted this on. 500000 Was it 500000 Yeah. Four. Four, five to four, four seven, five. That was the right thing. And that, that would acquire that we could all we could borrow money to acquire land plus do a building through them on the four so years. It could include the land and the Yes, we could acquire land, make a land purchase with it and build a city hall on it. And I think that was on was it four years. It was a long as they could. What with with these buildings, what about parking issues? This is seem like a problem out here or something. It is and that's you know we need some more parking spaces. The three locations that's that's on the table, they all have all have or can have ample parking. Okay. And easy access because this is not the easiest place to get in and out of it'll be the fire hall parking lot or the city hall parking lot. And with the three three lots that, that we have talked about and I personally do you know of any other property other than that that, that has accessibility plus what we that those are the only three that I know of right off the top of my head that's that's actually on the market. But it kind of gives us accessibility and a large enough area that we can we can actually have a, a decent parking lot. Now that rule development it would if we decided to I mean that's new construction or if New construction or remodel. Or remodel. Whatever we, whichever okay. way we go, it, it's there for either one. <coughs> I had about four point two five percent for forty years. That's what she quoted. It to me. We we calculated that. Or I got it on the on an amortization schedule and payment on that, but that rate would be two thousand one hundred and sixty eight dollars a month. And that was on a half a million, correct? That's on a half a million. Which we're actually hoping to acquire land and be able to stay under three fifty is what the hopes are. That's kind of our our goal that we're setting. If we do this is to keep it as low as possible. Could you, could you do something and think about maybe uh, uh, maybe not 
finishing it all, but having a you know a structure for it to be expanded because that's something that you know in the past I don't know that uh, a lot of governments around haven't looked at uh, you know growth and future expansion and things, and then they come up and then they've got to build something else where they don't have enough room before they know it. And, well, me and the mayor met with Seth. That was one of our things that we told him. Whichever way we go or whatever we build, we definitely want it to where if it's 50 years down the road, they need to add on to it. It'll be easy to come back in and add on, and you know, other than having to go find another location. And that, that's the key to having a big enough piece of property also to where you can do, you know, if you need expanded tiers 25, 30 years down the road, you can have it. And, and the building that the size of me and the mayor, and y'all y'all may want something bigger, may want something smaller. We just give him a ballpark figure of about what we kind of thought we had been talking about, and then it was a 40 by 60. Well, my, like I was telling Holly a second ago, I mean, unless I read this wrong, the census shows Tennessee Ridge actually has a bigger population than here and now. Yes. And I, I don't see that that might not continue to be the trend. And... I'd rather have something, I, I mean, we're not thinking of a police department here, but 30 years from now we may be. I'd rather have something that we could put that in easily than have to go back and redo something completely or find another land or something like that, you know, at the time. I mean, you got to build for the future instead of getting in to build for 50 years down the road, not just five, you know, or ten even. Well, that's the reason why I come, we come up with two different ideas. Is because y'all, as the governing body, can make that decision on which way that you want to go with. We kind of give you what we consider to be a high end of it, and then we give you what we consider to be the low. Like Sid said, it, you know, you see a lot of happens with buildings, it happens with highways. You, you're not building enough for the future, and you have to come back and redo. And in the long run, you're costing more money when you do something. That, and so you, you have a chance to do it all up front. And you, and you think it'd be cheaper now than it will be 20 years down the road. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely will be. So well, see, that's one of the problems with this particular lot. We have kind of boxed everything in around it, got a water tank here, a power all there, and you've not got no room. If you did expand, you still are faced with a parking issue that, you know, if we get many more people than what we've got right here, our, I've got to fire department door blocked over there, but left keys in the vehicle, so hopefully I won't get no ticket. But that's that's the issue, that's one of the issues that we have up here too. And you know, like you said, you need to plan for the future on down the road. You know, it ain't always gonna stay the same as they reach. Everything around us is growing and, and like the census proves that we're growing as a city up here also. <coughs> or a discussion on this? <coughs> if not, we'll move on to the next thing on the agenda, and uh, that's the BWSC invoices. I spoke with Dean about them, and he apologizes for not being able to be here tonight. He had some storm issues in the community, and he couldn't make it down. But uh, the problem with these invoices is he done a environmental on a job that another engineering firm had, which that was the last county project, which is actually still going on, but it, it's the environmental for it. And his explanation he gave me was that during, if you remember, we was late on getting started on this because the environmental was the hold up. Whenever we finally did get started, it was said that it was Barge Wagner's fault. Well, anyway, he had about twice as many hours involved in this by having to deal with another engineering firm. And that was the explanation that he gave to me was the build hours is is what made the build as high is what it was. And that's the reason why it was four thousand more than I guess what we paid one payment of four thousand. And then the other <coughs> thing came in four thousand. But he said that he should be here next month if y'all want to table this until he can come down and he would talk to you but that's more or less because I told him what y'all wanted 
and why you was asking questions because we was under the consumption that when we paid the four thousand dollars that we paid for the environmental on that he said well he said there was still some more stuff that was done after that was paid and and all the hours was not turned in on the first field but that's that was the explanation I got from him. <coughs> and by our question was it nine me no. I don't remember half of what goes on, but anyway, that it took them so long to turn in these invoices that wasn't that Nancy that it was like the project it had been over and everything and then here they come what a year later with these invoices? Well, that, that was our question and that was that was what we were waiting on Dean to verify. For I say I didn't know. I so did long. not ask you my question. I apologize that I wasn't at our last meeting to know what the question was y'all had for him. But it, you can table it until next month. And he said he was planning on being here this month. Okay. What's going on there? Just waiting until Dean is here to explain why it took a year to. It's my land voices in charge of money for him or? Yeah, I say the table when he's here so he can speak. Speak and explain to us. Okay. We'll just wait until Dan's here to explain better, give us a better understanding of why it takes so long for that bill to come in and for him to come up with all the details. We won't get that. Is there anything else under our business that anybody wants to find out, discuss? Well, I don't know if this is old business or not, but all these letters of people resigning from the Planning Commission, do we still have to have a Planning Commission if we're not going to have the zoning ordinance? Yes, you will. You have to? Mm -hmm. And part of the three-star, if I'm not mistaken, is one of the criteria for them. You still got subdivision regulations that, uh, you know, and, uh, if anybody uh, builds anything, if anybody subdivides a piece of property to less than five acres, you're going to have to, before it can be surveyed out, you're going to have it's going to have to come before the planning commission. So you're going to have to have, have you, you still have to have planning commission. If not, we'll move on to new business. The budget amendment. Okay. So we're done taking care of that on the other ones. The amendment complains under the ordinances. Okay. Then uh, I think we had uh, Ms. Gull. Yes. <laughs> I understand that you'd like to speak to us. Well, now. just for a minute, and I appreciate y'all allowing me to speak. Um, I'm not on the agenda, but um, my name is Betty Go, and I've been working with um, Danny Pepper, who lives in Dover and is with the um, Leaf Chronicle, and he was wanting me to come. Um, I'm sure y'all are familiar with these. Um, brochures that they put out in the newspaper that's called the great outdoors this one just came out um, just a week or two ago and then this is the one that's coming out toward the end of May it's called the summer vacation guide and what he was interested in trying to do is to see if you all would consider spending any money with the county and Aaron to try to promote our city and businesses out this way yeah, in Houston County, of course. So, um, if I can leave these here, uh, we're not really talking about much money. This is the ad that um, Cumberland City and Dover put in last year, and these little ads um, would be for businesses in the area that want to advertise, and they would be available like at 120 or $150. And then this ad right here, um, which Cumberland City was advertising, of course, their um, fireworks display and all of that. And that ad is um, going to be is going to be $600. And if Aaron and Houston County would want to contribute some money to, you know, promoting our county out here. Um, 
you know, we're not talking probably a couple hundred dollars, two, three hundred dollars. So anyway, I can leave these and y'all can look at them. And, and uh, the deadline for these is, I think he said May on the 2nd or something like that. Hopefully it'll be after your, after your next uh, board meeting. And um, y'all can make a, you know, make a decision about that. But, um, I, you know, it'd be, be something to, to think about. So I'd leave these here if that's what y'all want to do and look at them at, at uh, your leisure and, and um, see if there would be a benefit to our county. Oh, here's the literature that goes with it. And, the, and um, now these prices that are on this sheet, I'm going to leave that because that will just be confusing. The, the prices that are applicable are, are on the back of that one brochure. And then this is the reach on the advertising. So kind of tells how many newspapers, how many people. This one here, did you say Cumberland City and Dover went in together? Well, you can uh, no, not not that one. Uh, that's just Cumberland Cities. Okay. Uh huh. But it seems like most of the counties and the small communities and you know surrounding us do try to advertise in these in these I don't know what you call them flyers to kind of promote their counties. Interesting things in those booklets I've read and, and the paper and the mm -hmm. mm -hmm. quite a bit of information in there that you wouldn't know otherwise that played different places and places. Well, and, and the other thing that's beneficial is that the small businesses in the county can put their own ad in there, whereas if they try to do that kind of advertising on their own, most of the time it's pretty cost prohibitive. Mm -hmm. But if we can put together a whole big page like that and split up the cost with, you know, five or six businesses in the county and the city or the, you know, the towns in the area, it's doable. It's cooperative advertising is what it really boils down to. It's just for one page. It just for one page. For one the whole book. Just one page. <coughs> yeah, just for one. Yeah, just one page. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for coming by and sharing with us. And well, thank you for letting me to get that word out there. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's quite all right. Thank you for stopping. All right. Is there anything else under your business that we need to take up? If not, we move on to reports and recommendations on the sewer project and Dean's not here, so we'll have to wait until next month to ask him if you have anything. Have you got the list together on the problem? I haven't had a chance. Okay. I, I, just, he asked <laughs> I, me I left that up to Jerry and Leslie. Okay. That's one thing he asked. I've de delegated. I've had too much to do. <laughs> I do not. I do know Old Street Road. I won't stop till Old Street Road is fixed. <laughs> 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 that's if y'all have to deal with it, that's how I am. So just. <laughs> I wasn't. Didn't know I was on this, but Old Street Road, and there's oh. still a question about uh, down around the flow meter on Mobley Lane, as far as it's built up enough on the manholes and the grass and all that. So we'll wait till that till next month and hopefully the gang will be here to take care of all that for us then. Is there anything else that anybody needs to make the board or have you got anything you want to report about or uh, we all got my monthly report. Uh, we've started putting up the new hydrant markers. Uh, we're not gonna put them on the pavement anymore. Uh, these actually attach to the hydrant. Ours are blue. This is just a sample that they sent. So when you go home tonight, just kind of look around because we have got some already out. <coughs> and also, I need to see where we are on getting our parking lot fixed. I know we brought that up last year, and don't know where we stand on that. It's in the budget for next year to do that. Okay. That's one of the things we've added this year. It's on the list to be put in the budget this year. <laughs> well, I thought the the board appropriated some money when they uh, talked about it before. They just 
talked about it. We talked about it. We never appropriated it. I think that I know it for two readings. I think no. What was said was they put it in next year's budget. Okay. One thing that happened, it got late in the year, and the weather turned bad on us. Mm -hmm. What you're thinking of is, I was trying to get the National Guard to get the old ripped out and then a base put in there of, of stone so we wouldn't have the problem with the bumping. And that was one of the, the board agreed to pay for the gravel if we could do that. And then once we got that set up, we had to approve the money for the, for the concrete also. Okay. But I think we're gonna put in there a tearing out and putting back in, we're just gonna spec it the way. Get it off. Right, rather than, you know, we missed last fall's opportunity with Armory because we never could get together. So, you know, just hire somebody to do it all and it'll be done with. That's all I got. Anything else? Anyone? Anyone to discuss and bring up anything? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We'd like to thank everyone for coming and attending the meeting and showing an interest in the business of Chief's Ridge. And Thank our sponsors, Ice Hardware at uh, Young Blue Ridge at 721 -2500. They're located in Tennessee Ridge there at Gray's Crossing. Everything from uh, making a simple key to building a whole house pattern. Next is Signature Healthcare. They're located in here in Tennessee in Arlington Community. Uh, long time care, short time care. They can be reached at 289 4141 for any information you may need. Next is Traditions First Bank. They can be reached at 289 5500. They're Houston County's only hometown bank. So uh, whether you're looking to uh, buy a home, uh, refinance a car, finance a car, whatever, Houston County Drug Alliance is a great sponsor of ours and they watch our children and uh, different things go on in within the community. Like I said, Ace Hardware, one of our uh, oldest sponsors. Our oldest sponsor is Ace Hardware, located at Gray's Crossing in Tennessee Ridge. We are WCBN Channel 12.
because they wouldn't have been able to do it because they don't think it's weird. And you know, I, I don't want anybody to be able to do that. Yeah, but uh, we got to have somebody to cause what? Thank you, good Lord, for letting us get together to work uh, tonight with the city business. Lead and guide us in the direction that you'd have the eye to go and help us to uh, do things that would uh, be a help to the city. And watch of us. Amen. 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 Call a meeting to order. Uh, roll call. Alderman Bailey? Here. Alderman Campbell? Here. Alderman Dunn? Here. Alderman Finley? Here. Alderman Gooden? Here. Alderman Wiggins? Here. Alderman Shires? Here. Alderman Taylor? Here. Mayor Parchman? Here. Mr. Stevens? Here. We do have a quorum. have a motion to approve the minutes. First second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Uh -huh. All opposed? We have any grievances? I want to run something else by the board. It's just, uh, you know, we've had a truck burn up down at the uh, McKinnon Forest Station. And to my knowledge, they hadn't got a good lead on anybody yet. If there's any way that, that the board could do it, I'd like to put up a thousand dollar reward for the arrest and conviction of, and I've asked that the county put one up for their part too, which would make it two thousand dollars. And if there's more than one involved in it, I feel sure within a week we'll have an arrest made. But it's it's up to you people if you want to do that. I I don't know. We'd have to wait for the insurance money to come in, I guess, to get it. I don't know where we'd get the money. Mayor, uh, how would this person be able to? Sometimes you get good information. Yeah. Of, uh, without them uh, giving their source. I'll, uh, uh, I'd, let, I'd like for him to talk to our chief. If, if, if we do that, let Mark get the information and keep him uh, secretly for whoever turns him in or turns them in, he wouldn't want to, everybody to know who he was. The chief would be the sole one to know, and he wouldn't get no money till there's arrest and conviction. And the money know. could be cash. And the money would be cash. I mean, I'd like to add that to your... Make the motion and I'll write it. I'll make the motion that uh, we offer $1,000 arrest and conviction the person would notify Chief Moore and their name would never be divulged. Do you want the rest of it? The money would be paid in cash if that's what you want. I had good luck with school system. We've had good luck before with stuff. Question. Just yes. where, which 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 um, budget would that come out of? Would your general? It would. Uh, it depends on when the rest. I would probably want to wait till our <coughs> insurance money got here. Our adjuster came today and looked at it, and if they pay us anything, take the money out of that and pay them. That way, it wouldn't come out of fire. Out of our tax dollars. I second the motion. It's, it's all it's all tax dollars, but 
Uh, it's different than. I'm sorry. Crazy question. Would we legally be able to do that much money and have it unaccounted for? I mean, the law requires after, I think, $600, you have to do a 1099. Well, do you know? We, we have in the past. What is it? Rewards. Can, can you um, pay out a reward without reporting it? I, I think we could probably handle it like we do any other confidential fund. Um, and that may be something that Stevens, you might can help the board with it, that we can get, maybe get, get back in restitution. I, I'm not sure if we could or I, not. I can check on it. I, I think that the uh, provision on 1099 anything over 600 At one time, they were trying to repeal that part of it. I don't know whether they ever succeeded or not. But, uh, I'll need to check with a tax attorney on that. And do you know? Do you know if I mean we can seek restitution for that reward or money? I'm not sure on that. I'm not sure either. I can check uh, with them. Tax. I can check with them. No, it, 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 so that, I mean we can get that money paid back through fines and costs. I mean, you know that's something to look at. But while we had Channel 12 in the newspaper, I felt the night was the time to bring that up it's, it's like I say it's up to y'all you want to do a roll call we'll do a roll call vote question I'm sorry um wouldn't we need to decide if it was legal before we could do it well you can get the permission to do it uh or, or even put that in the motion uh, I will amend upon verification of legal I will amend my motion if this is legal in the opinion of Ms. of uh, attorney Stevens Um, with an arson, they're going to be afraid to talk because, hey, their house will burn. Well, could they still be kept confidential? I mean, that's as long as it's cash. Okay. Motion to approve $1,000 reward for arrest and conviction um, of fire. Of McKinnon Fire? McKinnon Fire. Where Erin Fire Truck was marked. Informant um, to notify Chief Moore, uh, name not to be divulged, reward to be paid in cash upon verification of legality. Motion by Ms. Finley, second by Ms. Shires. Alderman Bailey? No. Aye. Alderman Campbell? Uh, I do. Alderman Dunn? Yes. Alderman Finley? Yes. Alderman Gooden? Yes. Alderman Legan? Yes. Alderman Shires? Yes. Alderman Taylor? Yes. Mayor Parchman? Yes. Eight yes, one no, motion carries. Thank y'all. You want to uh, come in on the planning commission? Uh, the only business before the planning commission. Oh, uh, sorry, my microphone's not on. The only business before the planning commission was um, uh, Bud Simpson's property. She owns 25 acres, and they wanted to um, family. I think uh, is. Um, assisting and um, going to do a, like a sub or their intention is to subdivide that 25 and uh, their first step was to take where her house is and get that approved as a separate um, piece on that uh, so that was really the only business for Planning Commission uh, other than continued training the Planning Commission has to have four hours of training a year now we we do we do a little bit every month and we're now at two hours um, so. well that's all what was the um i'm sorry go ahead i was that's okay um what about the tank that's up there 
is that that's not on Biden's piece of property. Is it not? Um, uh, <coughs> the center, talk? The, the water plant, uh -huh. years ago, while uh, Mayor Finley, or uh, Mayor Largent one was here, they sold that water tank to uh, to Rusty Simpson. If we can go back in the minutes and find it in the uh, charter. But I, I was with the police department. I remember it. It's so. For they, they quit using it. They didn't so use it. That'd be part of the plot? Uh, the, uh, her house is on, it's a five acre plot that was separated from the other, from the total 25. And why it had to come for the planning commission is because the house was built prior to ever having planning and zoning. And the house is actually closer to the road than the normal setbacks, but it was grandfathered in. So all the planning commission is approved that, that that five acres was separated from it so they can continue. So I mean, I didn't even look at the idea of that. <laughs> it's just the buildings in the setback. That, that answer. Yeah, nobody knows. <laughs> nobody knows. Oh. Uh, new business. Let me do this one before I forget it. Friday at 1.30 p.m., we got a budget committee. Uh, need, need you here. And then we got a request for... Uh, or a part-time person for cutting grass and what have you. But if we hire one now, I don't know what we're going to pay him out of. We might want a tablet and talk about it another day, especially after we have our budget meeting Friday evening. That suits y'all. Mm -hmm. I'd like to divert. Okay, that suits me. And then you have a uh, FAR contract in your agenda. Our uh, contracts are due in November on the FAR department. Uh, I want you to uh, look it over real good and come up with the have a yay and a or something we're going to have to do some figuring and see what we can uh, operate it for mayor this refers to attachment a as to the equipment could we have attachment a it's not included in this okay i'll, I'll get it done. it's in the file i'm sorry <coughs> well uh before we come down to the end of it, we'll have attachment A for you. I heard you asking about attachment A a while ago, but I wasn't sure how to answer that. I, I, I don't know. It's in the file. Okay. Contract, I'll get it. I just overlooked it. We'll, uh, we'll have it for you Friday evening with the other, other stuff. Next meeting's fine. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, on your communications for the mayor, um, this might be a good time since we have the uh, Channel 12 as well as um, um, newspaper here to um, let the public know about the process if they have a um, something needs fixed of how they call call City Hall um, and have a work order done so that it can be tracked. Ms. Pendergrass? Um, as far as, as work orders, um, complaints on your water, uh, low pressure, leaks, gravel in the road, um, it's, it would be better if you had a complaint, if you called the central office, 289-4108, make your complaint there at the office instead of catching, and I'm not saying you shouldn't go to your alderman, but also go to City Hall so we can do a work order on it and we can track it and follow up on it and make sure that it's done instead of catching one of the maintenance crew or 
or just your alderman or just the mayor um, call City Hall and, and let us do a work order on it so we've got someone that can follow up on it and make sure that it's taken care of properly. Anybody have anything else? I'd like to know if the city is doing anything about the people burning houses around here. We got state farm marshals working on it. Working on that. Anything else? Anything else, unless there's something that I'm drastically forgetting, I'd, I'd ask for an adjournment. You waiting for a motion to adjourn? Yes, ma'am. I so move. I second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you all. I talked to her three today. She's, oh. I, she promised me she's going to put an article about the reward in the papers. Not only do we have, are, are you going to advertise it? Yeah. Okay. Good. So not only that, yeah, she's supposed to have an article about it too. So well, they have, of course, today's paper has an article. Oh, not that. No, not that. No, no. Is that the thousand dollar ad uh, that y'all are offering? No, we're talking about the county putting ten thousand dollars. Oh, ten thousand? Yes. Because the city just approved a thousand. Well, we're going. Yeah. I, we know that, but what we're hoping is we're going to talk to the mayor and the mayor of the city and see if they can come up with we'll a little bit more. You see what I'm saying? We won't know. That's negotiable. Okay. Can we do some flyers to do and um, someone post them around? I mean, we can, people yeah, yeah, we can put them on the wall. Uh, there's bulletin boards of uh, people. we right here and we're yes, out, you know, so out here. Uh, yeah. And even down at the lake. There's a community meeting Friday and then the steward. Good idea. Uh, uh, Kim and Thursday, uh, Saturday, so I'll go there and I'll pass out the supply. If we're still discussing the same thing, if we're going to do that much money, we ought to probably put an ad in the Humphreys County and Montgomery. Go like so? You don't know how far out you're going to reach. It's somebody local. It's, it's, if, you put in, if you put in local papers, yeah. you know, it's yeah. Yeah. they'll probably pick it up in the other papers. Yeah. Yeah. We need to make sure all 13 here are for it. So we put it in the motion on Jim of whomever may have done this, and then we're going to discuss with the city and add whatever they can come up. Right now, we know it's a thousand. George said, Mr. Jeremy has been generous; he's going to come up with a thousand. So we've got at least a twelve thousand dollar reward right there, uh, and hopefully it may be a little bit more. Does that sound right? Yes. And uh, we're going to put it in our local paper and try and get some flyers. Excellent. Okay. Is that the motion? All right. Take it from there, Jeremy. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Yeah. There you go. Uh, the, uh, the other motion was that we bid out the fire station. I'd also like, let's talk about the truck and the equipment because we need to move forward. I'll be good on that. And for the space to furnish the truck. Uh, so the, uh, we can get it. It's going to be. I did. I did. I did have a conversation with. Uh, well, let me go back a little history wise. Several years ago, when we bought those engines, if you were to milk the new ones, we refinanced those and went through real development. I remember that. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you go, if you buy a new one, we, we could probably go through real development and stretch it. Or, because a new vehicle will finance longer than a used one. Now the building will finance uh, uh, for a long time if we, if we wanted to finance it, which I don't know that we're going to have to do that because we should get enough money to pay for that. Uh, 
but they'll look at the value of that or the life of that vehicle and tell us how long the will development can find it. So if you want to buy a new one. If you want to buy a used one, they'll look at the life of the used one. <coughs> we can go through real development or we can go through our regular banks like we like we've done in the past. But I think personally I think we're on one. Whatever you guys want to do, if you want to buy go a new route or if you want to see about getting some pretty good used stuff, then we need to get a bid out and get some of that stuff here so that at our next legislative body meeting, you can make a decision as to moving forward so we can get it back in operation. Yeah, right. Same thing with equipment. We got the equipment's going to be day ones, pretty much what it takes to be put on that equipment to make it work right. So that stuff can go and be bid out. I mean, you you, you got to have hose, you got to have nozzles, you got to have all this kind of stuff. Is there equipment for the insurance? Is there replacement value or is it appropriate? Well, we've got a certain value that was turned in on it, and they've agreed to uh, pay for what we turned in, which was five thousand and something. Uh, what well, four thousand three hundred fifty-seven dollars? That was equipment that was strictly on the truck. We had another eleven thousand four hundred dollars that was inside the building that was account. So we, have so we should be getting this money. Any idea? Ah, probably one hundred and forty fifty thousand. A good truck. Yeah, about a tanker. We'll take a public one like we need to be probably 130, 140,000. We paid 140. I'm going to come in and be all. We don't pay. We fight. I mean, we can get the numbers on these things. that would be ready for the next commission meeting. Give me a bit of years to end you. Yes. That makes sense. I'll say that. And then, you know, once we get all that, I can. I can have the financials to know what it's going to cost you to go to you and use and uh, if you would have fallen off. Okay. okay. Motions right now? That uh, we give you permission to uh, take, get, take bids and write up the specs for both of the your pieces of equipment and the vehicles. Where do you, you get that other vehicle? We, we, we have bought a lot of our used vehicles from Street County. I'm going to say, you can put a big Mr. Jordan, they got far stations out of the way. And that's one way that they, they operate. They buy used to put more of a and then they get it out. And we, we always did it. So, yeah. Oh, we'll be able to go. 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 We'll be What's that rambling? Right? Right. 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 Okay. Any other discussion on what we're doing here? I have a couple things. John Liss? No, no, no. no. Okay, what's up? Right. On this motion, all in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, any opposed? Yes. Okay, let me show you one other thing. Guys, this is, uh, this is your area that we actually covered now. If you can see it, I'll pass it around. But what it shows is where our four stations are, and it gives you an idea of our coverage that we have, okay? Now, that's, that's phase one. If we did phase two, then you would pick up, <coughs> and this is not exact locations, but if we added, if we ever decided to add a couple more stations, you pretty well could get most of the county uh, fully covered with uh, fire. I'll pass this one. I just want this back. Okay. I don't have anything else on the gas right now. John, you reached the uh, old Tennessee Ridge with the old Tennessee Ridge. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Tennessee Ridge has been real good. Uh, Kenneth Dunn called me the first thing uh, when I got in uh, that morning <coughs> and uh, said, George, we'll, we'll be glad to cover that end of the county. Uh, while y'all going through this period. And uh, he said, the only thing that we, we need is we need some people to help. Uh, I don't know how many people they have in their department, but they don't have enough to just manage everything. So uh, I said, that would be a problem. I said, we got plenty of staff. And I had uh, uh, Dave uh, get with uh, Spencer Bryant, who's their chief, and they worked that out to where any call that takes place in that area of counties, uh, Tennessee Ridge will handle it until we get back in business. So we need to just uh, thank those guys for the same. Thank you. 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 Thank you
but yeah, it was, uh, Lieutenant Zemir, you want to take over there? Uh, we, don't want, we don't want to take over there. We don't want to take over there. We don't want to take over there. We just want to take over there. First thing they told me, they are. They are. They are. They are. They are. Well, we, we're not in the business of taking over fire departments. We just want to take over there. Anything else? Two, two things. One, how many here have computers, access to the internet, and use email type stuff? Who, who does not? Anybody does not? Okay. So everybody is comfortable with using Word and things of that nature and searching the internet. I can't for what? I can't even turn the computer over. Well, I just, I'm just going to see if, if, uh, if, if that was the case that we were deficient in that, but maybe we could get uh, uh, Kay to uh, at the library to give us classes and things that we're, we're deficient as commissioners in. Uh, because this day and age, you, you've got to be able to do that kind of stuff. Well, they have a class down there now, don't they? Yeah, it's a real beginning class. They, they start next uh, Monday, I think. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, that's, that, that. The other thing is, I make a motion that we set the budget committee, the same members of the budget committee, and to do it at the same time we have a budget meeting to discuss the road specs for a new road, and we get that started right off. Well, I'm you don't have to make a motion, just do it. Well, we, need, we need to do it, we don't need to drag our feet. Just put it on our agenda. Yeah. And, and we'll, uh, I'm getting from the county, and I'll feed it to you as much as I get, and I'll give you ideas about what other people do. We'll, we'll, we'll in the next month, we should start, you know, on our budget. Uh, we can't, we can't find a lot of money stuff until the very end, but, uh, uh, it's about time for us to start passing our military storm. Let's hope it's a good one. You know, we won't go into everything's in the uh, budget we've looked at. Right now, that's pretty really good. I will say that uh, uh, we did get our first uh, large check from uh, FEMA here, and uh, we're going through that now. Are we going to, are we, if, if the government shuts down tonight, are we going to shut down some money we're getting? We we already got we got a check in for nine hundred and ninety thousand dollars just like this week. And uh, are we expecting anything else? Because after the night we will to get and we will be uh, we've got when we get this money, there's a stack uh, and I'm not exaggerating that tall of PWs. All right, that covers Highland Department, schools, solid waste, general fund, you, you name all of it's in there and we have to go through and sort out who gets what part of that. Now, the larger part of that, would, of course, would go to the higher part. But, uh, and, and several dollars would go to the schools to say that part of the damage. But when we go through with that, then the money's already at the trustee's office, and we're going through it right now to make sure we don't have any errors, because if you do, then you'll have the department saying, hey, you <laughs> We're going to go over with each department and actually go over themselves. So we're, we're going through it to make sure it's right. And we'll, that money will be dispersed. Uh, it, uh, it looks like uh, uh, probably the higher department is going to end up right now with somewhere around 700 to 750,000 under, under this particular. Can we take a loan out for some of these? Uh, well, the higher department took a loan out from the from the debt service board, which you'll be making payments on in regards to. Was there, was there anything else they can have to do on? Uh, schools. What are you saying? That board of school? schools? Schools. Schools may have to do on. So they're going to be working with them? They'll be, they'll be making a payment back in regards to the schools. But, uh, that's not all of the money that we'll get. Actually, uh, we've got PWs in for about a million five. And when you say that, that's a total amount. You don't get all of that. You only get, uh, there's 10% that they hold back. Uh, the federal government pays a certain amount and then we get a certain amount from the state. Okay, so but we have by then nine hundred and something thousand dollars. Nine hundred and ninety one thing we have a restricted risk and it's going to pass out to get the time to get they're still in the I got a no, no, they're still in the limbo as to what they're going to do in regards to that. I heard about the stuff that we would be applied for the highway department and nine and one. Right, that's we got the application in, but not the application. On the applications that we got in, we turned in an application 
for a million, what, million eight? I don't know what it was, but for the 911 building and the highway department. And we've not heard anything back on those applications yet. Okay, it's so where they've approved. Now, the $750,000 one, we already got a letter back saying that it's approved. And actually, I signed a contract on that. Uh, and it's been sent back to the state. But they've not signed it. Since, <coughs> to me. since that took place, uh, they've had HUDs come back with some more regulations. And that's, <laughs> I'm telling you, it's pretty sad, really. They come back with some more regulations now saying, we don't know if we're going to fund these or not. Uh, and uh, so we're waiting to see. We wrote, I, wrote, uh, I, I know I've already wrote one letter explaining what we're doing to try and clarify our project. But there are some counties that they have already had a signed contract and it's spent money. I'm not talking about the county signing the contract. I'm, talking, I'm, I'm not talking about, talking about the state signing it and the county signing it. And those people went out and spent money. And now they're telling they're not eligible. So I'm kind of glad we're, we're not in that. I think we'll get ours worked out, but it's still in limbo right now. Uh, so we, that's why we've not moved any further in regards to our purchase of our land. We've got as far as we've done. I've signed the contract. I'm waiting for them to state to sign it and give it back to me and say it's ready to move on. And I have some communications with uh, the Sweet and Cox. I don't know, you probably know what I'm talking about today. And Paul and Love it with the state in regards to that. And they're, they're trying to get a clarification from them. Uh, it was all, <coughs> in my understanding, it, it, it was all great with the people that Nashville was working with and the HUD people they were working with in Tennessee. And then when they sent it to Washington, somebody threw a flag and that stopped the whole So. We'll see. We'll see. Hopefully not. I mean, we've, we've got uh, three good projects that we're willing to do. And I, I'll tell you, I've never, I've been around a long time, I've never had to stay after you get a letter approving a grant, come back to you and say, hey, we don't know now whether it's going to be approved or not. That's the first to tell them. Most time you get that letter, hey, your grant's been approved and you move, they're telling you to move forward. There's no, they send you a contract, you sign it, it's lost. Okay. Just another question. Okay. Um, <coughs> the center of the tissue use. You might tell me that we've got some new kids up there now. I think it's on the floor. It's, it's uh, we have up there, uh, it's not uncommon to have 100 to 125 kids on the Friday night. Uh, it's really, Watch it's really know. grown. Uh, I mean, that's, that's a good problem to have. And he'd like to, he'd like to move and expand like, it down to 60 miles a year. But, you know, at that, that particular location, there's not a lot of expansion. I mean, this comes from somebody, was it FCE now? He, he spoke to me and was talking about that he had requested them to bring foods on Friday night because there's a bunch of kids that come up there that's got a quarter to buy candy and, and they leave hungry. And asked him if they'd run soup. If we not got anything in our budget to we, fix for him to buy some we soup. Give, he has money to buy stuff that he sells, but I think, you know, he does that for, uh, that's good PR. Those, those ladies like doing that too. You see what I'm saying? It's a public service type thing, uh, and they give it away to the kids that. Uh, it kind of bothered me when he said, you know, got well, kids that can leave, they were probably hungry. Uh, but uh, uh, they're, they're pretty lean up there. <coughs> But they are having a big crowds. Uh, they, you know, it's uh, you know, we got out of where one very many at all coming, but it's come back. To where, uh, like I say, they have 100, 125 kids, and really, that's a hundred is enough. When you get above, it, and we've talked about as a board, the board meets every month in regards to. We've talked about even saying, hey, look, this is a certain number, no more okay. have it but you hate to do that because hey, most kids need some sort of it. It's just like he's a pretty good problem. But hey, it, it is a good problem. I mean, but you know, a lot of people, you know, you, uh, uh, we're, we're the only county I know of around that has this. I don't know of another county that has run in Davidson County or something like that. Well, the center, well, doesn't, doesn't, be, the center doesn't get people from Humphreys County, Stewart County. We do have some kids. Not just you can county. It's not just you can county. one out of week. Right. No, no, no. They're open on, they're open on uh, uh, let's see, 
Tuesday. Tuesday, Thursdays, Fridays, and I have on Saturdays. Saturdays. They don't sell them. They don't sell them. They don't sell them late on Saturdays. And then they're open for, for parties. Like if a birthday party, somebody wants to have a birthday party up there, then they pay, I forget, some uh, $100 or whatever. I can't remember the exact fee. And then they have the use of the whole set by themselves on a particular time. David Cook, they were in there. Yeah, David Cook and uh, 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 Harvard, 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 Harvard. Both of them, are, uh, they did a good job. Uh, and then uh, uh, Miss Carpenter's up there, too. He just changed it since he's been there. It's, it used to be 7th through 12th grade, and he's back down to 6th. And so that's kind of added to what happens. Yeah. That might help. Yeah. That might help alleviate some of the numbers if you go back to the other. Well, here's around. the problem that you get into when they start getting older. They don't want to be. <laughs> they, when they start getting older into the older grades, they won't be the sixth grade. They, well, is that coming? They're more trouble. 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 And you really have to, and he backed it down, so I don't know if seniors even, you know, 12th graders really don't vote their whole lot at all. So no, I think you take the 12th off. He, 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 just, he just, you just have, once they get in with 12th grade, you don't have it some good. I mean, yeah. it's the young ones. The parents are not usually the point of the babysitters. No, not as much. Well, yeah, you're going to get some. Sure because some. Because yeah. there are children that get off uh, when school's out, the school bus will let them walk there and they'll go over there. But it's not huge numbers for that. Uh, it's just they like to go up there. Uh, the lady, uh, and I don't, I don't know if it's in people's names, but I know a, a lady that has two kids that's real close to me. She has two children to go up there. Uh, so, that's good. Um, that's good. That's a good problem. Oh, baby. Actually, you know, baby, baby, it's, baby, it's, baby, it's, baby. Our, it's something good. You know. Gee, let me back up all things that we said. Sure. I had a phone call from a lady from a table call from a lady. She's not in my district, but anyway, she said that she had a daughter that, that applied for help from FEMA after the flood. Okay. She received a letter saying that she was going to have to pay his money back. There are some of those out there. Well, that's my question. I hadn't heard of any, and this is what I told her. I instructed her. I had to call your office to see if we had to hurry. I've had uh, is it a bogus, is it a bogus letter, or is it a no. legit? legit it's it's no, no, it's a legit. That, you might want to explain that. I've talked with FEMA on this. i talked about the number of people. I've talked with FEMA on this. The number of people from our county have received letters, I'm not sure how many. What it is, I was told, look, the people do not make a mistake as residents of supply. The application of such, I mean, people have no idea of trying to get anybody in front of you that nature. And suddenly, FEMA has said, hey, wait a minute. you got to go pay the money back. They made a mistake. They should not have issued the money out, but they did. And now, I told you, if I can help you, I will, but that's better. I they can do it. If you can, well, they, they can have a recourse. They can, they can, uh, uh, they can appeal. They, they can, can appeal. appeal. They can appeal. Yeah. Well, they tell, they ask them to make payments while they appeal. Now, whether they do or not, that's how you deal. You were in the same meeting that I was in. Did that man ever mention, because we asked that very question, is there any downside to us not no, accepting? No, and see, and that's what this lady said that the meeting, that the letter stated in there because we opted not we opted out to pay. Yes. That is the reason why they're having to pay the money back. We had 30 days to get in and we didn't, but we would never once that told them. never said anything about that. And we asked those questions. We said, is there any downside to us not getting in? He said, well, in two years, you're probably going to be forced in. Mm -hmm. right. And we said, well, the administration may change. So we're just going to. That's what I told her when she called me. I said, we, we were not informed of no. this. Do you remember David him ever telling us? No, no, no. Well, we didn't. Well, I was that, that, that's all the point I heard. We could. Hey, Chris, you know what you say? Tell me what you said again. I didn't get to hear all of it. What I said? Yeah. Like the lady, I didn't hear what was supposed to She called me. Okay. And she was just questioning me. If, uh, she said that her daughter had applied, and I think it was like $5,000. $5,500 from FEMA. Yeah. They sent her a letter telling her, in this letter, that she was going to have to pay this money back because the she was going to have to pay this money back because the county didn't get in on the insurance past the thing about the FEMA uh, insurance program. Therefore, the people in Houston County was going to have to repay money. And my question to that, she was the only one that I have even talked to about it. And that's the reason why I'm bringing it up tonight, because I hadn't heard of anybody else getting a letter. And I was just curious. And I, I asked her to call GE's office to, to see 
some heads up on it, you know, and I haven't heard anything else from her. Apparently, she's called a few other. Yes, yeah, called me. Okay, because that's the only phone call I've got. She's down with you. Okay. Okay, that's about 15. Same lady, something like that. She never sent me any videos. And it was, it, was, it was the girl who paid it. The one that actually, she wasn't actually the one that got the money. It was her daughter who was the one that received the money. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Take a moment to uh, thank our sponsors, Ace Hardware. At, uh, you can be reached at 721-2500. They're located in Tennessee Ridge. They're at Gray's Crossing. Everything from uh, making a simple key to building a whole house pattern. Next is Signature Healthcare. They're located in here in Tennessee in Arlington Community. Uh, Long-time care, short-time care. They can be reached at 289-4141 for any information you may need. Next is Traditions First Bank. They can be reached at 289-5500. They're Houston County's only hometown bank. So uh, whether you're looking to uh, buy a home, uh, refinance a car, finance a car, whatever, Houston County Drug Alliance is a great sponsor of ours and they watch our children and uh, different things